Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and Restless Sally and Adam have a run-in with Nick, Victor receives a stunning request from Victoria, and Lauren deals with a drunk Nikki. As they sit down for their dinner date at the club, Adam compliments Sally on her appearance. He pours sparkling water instead of champagne to avoid negative behavior before toasting to us. As Sally and Adam dive into their carbonara, Adam reflects that it's just like old times. The conversation shifts to her conquering the design world by storm, and him and Nick impressing their father. Adam says he still needs to earn Nick's trust. Sally is impressed that it matters to him. She wants this for them and will always feel bad about her role in their broken relationship. Adam informs her that it was fractured long before she got to town. He shifts the conversation back to her business, and Sally reports that her new client is ready to move forward. Adam says they're both on top of the world and inquires, Are you ready for dessert? Sally teases about having chocolate truffles in her minibar. Adam inquires, Are you sure about this? Sally is certain that she does not want this evening to end. Adam wants nothing more than to go to Sally's room, but he has made assumptions about her feelings in the past and does not want to make the same mistake again. Sally inquires as to if he is happy. He replies, very. So is she. They express satisfaction with their investment of time. Sally wonders if it's truly moving too fast. Adam believes there's a lot at stake. Sally acknowledges that they had gone through a lot and lost a lot. On some days, she didn't think she'd make it out alive. It's frightening, but if there's one thing she's learned, it's that you have to grasp delight and cling on for dear life. That's why I don't want this night to end. Adam responds, neither do I, and takes her hand. At Newman Enterprises, Nick discusses work with Victor, but his father seems distracted. He believes that working with Adam makes him very pleased. Victoria appears flustered. She thanks Nick for filling in for her. Nick and Victor exchange glances. Nikki is frustrated with her work at Newman Media, so she closes her laptop and gets her handbag. She takes out her flask and thinks about it before firmly placing it in her drawer and closing it. Nikki then goes out. In Victor's office, Nick informs Victoria that he and Adam are co-CEOs. Victor announces that it is already proving to be successful. Victoria raises her hands. Whatever you think is best. Right now, all she can think of is Claire. Nick inquires about her well-being, and Victoria responds that it will be a long path. She and Cole are trying everything they can to help her. But she wants to cut off communication. Victor believes it may be for the best. Victoria protests in disagreement. She explains that Claire needs a favor, which is why she is there. Victor cannot believe it after what she did to them. Victoria needs to borrow the company jet and the security crew to fly Claire to Jordan. Nikki appears and says, Over my dead body. Victoria asks her mother to try to understand, but Nikki declines. Any touch between Claire and Jordan is hazardous to all of them. Victor agrees. Nikki bellows that Jordan is evil personified. Why would you even want to see her again? Victoria says she won't be. Claire prefers to meet her alone. Victor grumbles. Wait a minute. This woman, after everything she's done, has the audacity to make a conditional demand? Are you serious? Nikki can only image what they will do if left alone. Victoria claims that Claire requires clarity to heal. Victor is likely to say no. Nick knows Victoria would not ask unless she believed it was the proper thing to do. They need to hear her out. Victoria is concerned, but as Claire's mother, she owes it to her to help her move forward. Victor is unconvinced. We don't even know this woman. Nikki believes Jordan should spend the rest of her life in a jail cell and not be rewarded for her actions. Victoria yells that if she doesn't take this leap of faith for her daughter, she will lose her forever. I can't let that happen. Victoria tells Nikki that when Jordan kidnapped Claire, she put her life on the line to save her. Nikki responds, 
I only did that for you. Victoria understands and loves her for it. But whatever comes next, whatever the risk, I have to take that same chance for my daughter. Claire must end her relationship with Jordan in order to move on to opportunity at a relationship with her daughter. She can't alter the past, but she can help Claire discover who she is and reclaim the identity Jordan stole from her. Victoria reminds her father that he taught them that family comes first. I will not give up on my kid, so please, Daddy, help me. Please help me make this happen. Nikki cautions Victor that this might be another trap or manipulation. Victor does not trust the woman, and his instincts tell him not to, but Victoria is a mother, and he has always taught her to support her family. Nikki is shocked when Victor says he would furnish their daughter with a jet and a security crew. Nikki exclaims, My feelings don't matter. Victor exclaims that of course they matter, but he is trapped in the middle. Nikki asks Nick if he believes this is a good idea. Nick has always been supportive of Victoria and has offered to accompany her. Victoria says that's unnecessary. Nikki raises her hands, all right, that's settled. I'll just return to my office. Nikki returns to the door and tells her daughter, I hope you don't come to regret this. Is she all right? Nick inquires of Victor. Victor sighed. He doesn't need the turmoil and claims their mother is fighting for her life. She's attending AA meetings and her sponsor is attempting to help her. I know your mother. She's strong. She will fight this and win. Nikki enters her workplace and opens the drawer. She grabs the flask and pours vodka down her throat. Victor approaches the locked office door as she sits on the sofa with the drink. He calls out to her. Nikki does not respond, so he departs. She moans and continues drinking. Nate enters into crimson lights and sees Victoria. He inquires as to her well-being and that of her mother. Victoria thanks him for bringing her mother back from the brink the other day. Nate was happy to help. Victoria returns to Chancellor Winters and says, They're lucky to have you. Nate inquires whether it is true that she took a leave of absence for Newman. Victoria responds, For personal reasons, yes. Nate is apologetic. He asks if he can help. Victoria claims her entire world has been flipped upside down, and she has no idea how to get out of it. She has always treasured his advice if he is willing to listen. At the club, Nick bumps into Adam and Sally, who are walking up the stairs to her room. Adam hopes this doesn't ruin everything. Nick reassures his sibling that everything is fine. Sally wishes Nick a happy evening. He adds, you too, and proceeds to the bar. Adam, Sally, Nick, Yi, and R. Nikki stumbles through the spinning doors behind him as he seats to order a scotch. When she sees her son, she sneaks off to the side to hide. Nick steps away to tape a call, and Nikki appears. Lauren enters just then. Nikki slurs, Lauren. Hello, I was just leaving. We will talk soon. You wouldn't believe the meeting I just had with Victor, Nicholas, and Victoria. My feelings seemed meaningless. Lauren asks, are you? As Nikki continues, Nikki only wants to find serenity. Lauren informs her that she won't find peace in a bottle. Nikki drawls, how dare you? She stumbles as she rejects Lauren's desire to call Victor. She will take a taxi. Lauren offers to drive her home. Nikki complains that she can't go home because Victor can't see me. Lauren grabs her, grips on, and says she has an idea. Nate discovers Claire Grace is Victoria's daughter while on the patio at Crimson Lights. Victoria updates him on Aunt Jordan and the goings-on at the lake house. Nate exclaims, God, that's horrific. Victoria says they're doing everything they can to get Claire the help she needs. They were able to get her transferred to a hospital rather than a prison, and she now wants to confront Jordan. She does not want her to be near the woman, but she does want her to find some serenity. Nate believes that helping Claire in this situation is the proper decision. She should be given the chance to confront Jordan about the abuse and falsehoods as she feels strong enough. Victoria is relieved. This boosts her confidence in pushing forward. Nate cannot understand how upsetting this must be for her. Victoria misses the relationship. Did everything that happened really destroy what we had? 
Lauren orders room service for coffee in a club suite, and Nikki tells her she's helping by keeping this a secret. Lauren doesn't want to keep this a secret. You think that I am drunk? Nikki slurs. Lauren sighs. Nikki has an addiction, and it's on Jordan. She knows Nikki is striving hard to regain her sobriety. Her coffee and grimaced. She wants to sleep it off. But Lauren reminds her that Victor will be waiting at home. Nikki complains that he calls her throughout the day. Lauren reminds her that he loves her. Nikki's phone rings. It is Victor. If she responds, he will know. You answer it. Lauren gasps, you want me to lie to Victor. Nikki vows to come clean with him later. Lauren responds and Victor inquires where Nikki is. Lauren responds, she's with me. She claimed to have had a fashion emergency at Fenmore's, and Nikki rushed to her rescue. We'll probably be working through the night. Victor requests that she put Nikki on the phone. Lauren says she can't get to the phone right now. Victor suspects she's been drinking. Lauren answers, yes. Victor sighed. He will have this chat with Nikki at home. Lauren disconnects and promises Nikki that she will never lie for her again. Nikki thanks Lauren and encourages her to return home to Michael. Lauren asks, Do you honestly think I'd leave you here alone? That isn't happening. On the terrace of Crimson Lights, Nate tells Victoria that as much as he loves her, he will never be able to tolerate her father's hold on her, nor will he ask her to leave them. Victoria appreciates him being so open and honest. Nate claims that is what friends do, and he is her buddy. He is available if she needs to talk and will assist her if that is what she requires. Nate says he has to get going. Take care, Victoria. Adam asks Sally if she's okay after seeing Nick like that. Sally admits it was uncomfortable, but they'll have to grow accustomed to it. Adam wonders if she means this date went so well that there could be others. Sally muses. Well, I'm not sure. This one isn't finished yet. Chocolate? Adam grabs the box and places it on the table. He brushes her hair and gives her a kiss. Sally takes Adam to the bed, where they kiss again. She removes his jacket as they continue to make out. Adam places her on the blankets, and their fingers entangle as he nuzzles her neck. Next on the young and the restless, Victor swears to defend Nikki at all costs. Ashley confronts Audra, and Claire completes unfinished business with Jordan. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like. And subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.